What's up YouTube? It's your boy Chris here. Today I'm going to talk about Tinder and I'm going to give it a quick review because I used this app from about October to about February of this year. Let's see, what can I say? So the first thing I'm going to tell you about Tinder is it's owned by the same company of Match Group, which also own probably a half dozen or more dating sites like Silver Singles, Our Time, Plenty of Fish, um, what else? There's a million places they own. You'd be surprised. Just look it up on Wikipedia. It's owned by, it's a larger company that owns this this app um, but basically when I when I joined up in October you know I created a basic profile with some pictures I didn't have any of the the tinder plus or the tinder gold yet um, but right away you're presented with options when you sign into this app it kind of tricks you into buying these app, extra subscription services so in my case <laughs> I actually ended up buying six months of tinder plus and then realized that I should have bought Tinder Gold and even though I had subs canceled my subscription renewal which would have been due up in in April of 2021 um, I went ahead and purchased Tinder Gold but because I had signed up for a subscription of six months it immediately rolled me in for six months of Tinder Gold so you can do the math of how much cash I spent on this bitch I think it's going to be 150 plus 150, like 300 bucks total. Not worth jack shit, but uh, you know it was admittedly fun when I was using it. Um, you know the first thing that this app does is when you first join up, you get kind of like a boost in in uh, your card stack. So for those that don't know, when you join Tinder up, you fill out a profile with some pictures, a bio uh, about you. It also has little bubbles of interest so if you're into jogging or cycling or or drinks or whatever you can add up to think six different categorizations to your profile which can help enhance your your matching um, when I signed up you know the first people that hit me up were bots and scammers right away you know just fucking fast and they're pretty convincing you know, the common scams that hit me up first were these assholes that, you know, are pretending to want you to do a verification check for safety, but it's really just a fucking fake website to sign you up for some shitty porn for like six months or a year or so, or even a monthly subscription, which you'll never get out of because it's, they don't care, there's no rules. Um... So be on the aware of that, you know, a clear sign of Tinder when you get a bot matching you is so instantly message you as soon as you match with them. It's quite clear. Now, one of the more insidious things that has happened to me was when I got a match, you know, I exchanged numbers with somebody and I shouldn't have done this. I'm just an idiot. Um, this person started texting me and of course they gave me this bullshit link. You know, I didn't fall for it. I'm like, whatever. I mean, I ain't going to sign up for your shitty service when I can get, you know, this stuff for free. You know, but, you know, there are a lot of gullible people out there. So be aware that there are very sophisticated scammers out there that operate on the fringe of society. And I hope they burn in hell. You know, they uh, they prey on the weakness of, of people out there, the gullibility of men or women that are lonely and they may fall for this bullshit, but trust me, I'll never fall for it. Never. Um, but uh, moving on, if you do subscribe to Tinder, which I really don't think you should, um, keep in mind it's expensive. There's no lifetime membership with this shit. Yeah, you can sign up for a year, I think it's 300 bucks. And even if you get your Tinder Gold and Platinum, they're gonna try and upsell you for Tinder Platinum which is a complete con artist job. You know, they they claim that you can send messages to people that haven't matched with you, you know, or super like them for unlimited likes. I mean, when you have Tinder Gold, I think you get five super likes a day. To be honest, I never used that feature. I thought it was kind of pointless. You know, it's kind of a show of desperation uh, from my perspective. 
Um, and to be quite honest, the, most people that like you on these apps don't really answer you back anyway. They're just looking for validation or they're bored or something like that. Um, you know, it's, it's fun to go to different cities. You know, I went into Moscow uh, for a few times and I remember one time I had 200 likes. Like it was just insane. But it was everybody from old grandmas to very young girls and none of them really spoke very good English or even understood what the fuck I was saying to them. It was kind of almost pointless. You know, I had a few scammers out there begging for money and I'm like, done. You know, just block, unmatch them immediately and move on to the next. Um, what I did like about the app was you could go to different cities and see what people are like in different areas. Um, you know, I found a lot of scammers coming out of Ghana, um, Nigeria, um, China, Russia, the common actors that you'll find anywhere. And, you know, their method of operandi is pretty much the same, although some of them are a little more discreet and subtle in their scamming techniques you know for example if you're gonna like a girl that's in china or hong kong and they don't show her face or it's kind of obscured in most of the pictures or there's no fucking description or it's just some stupid ass tube line thing that's describing something that's really not about her these are usually scammers and how they work is they usually talk to you for a few days or weeks and then they spring up this fi this wonderful financial investment in Bitcoin or some kind of cryptocurrency bullshit scam and get you to invest in this kind of new guaranteed investment where your money will go into another scammer's pocket and you'll never see it again. So I would avoid, personally, I, n I never right swiped on anybody from China. And it's not against their ethnicity, it's just, it's a waste of fucking time. So... You know, as Scarface once said, don't waste my motherfucking time. It's true. Your time is valuable. Don't bother with these people. Move on. Uh, with Russia, it's the same kind of thing, although you may find a few women in there that are genuine, but it's kind of rare. You know, um, yeah, a lot of them won't understand what the hell you're saying, or they're just, they'll say one-word answers. Really, it's pointless. You know, there's, there's no real point in communicating with these people. Um... And Tinder has these things where they'll have swipe frenzies or whatever at, at, the, at the night. And if you're partic participating in this, what they claim to do is they put your profile in this special stack of cards. So everybody in Tinder is called a card stack and they're in a card stack. And when you're in these swipe surges, you get put in these stacks to get you more visibility. Although I can't verify to the validity of this because Tinder will not share their algorithms with anybody. Uh, there's no way they would do it. And quite frankly, I don't think they have very much artificial intelligence in these fucking apps. I think it's just a basic percentage-wise. So if Joe Blow has swiped right on 50 out of 100 women, you get placed down here on the stack. Or if you're Johnny Smith, who's really desperate for action, and you swipe right on every goddamn woman, he's going to be put really down low on the stack, and he won't be shown to very many people because he's right swiped everybody and that's just a fact of life like if you're on tinder don't fucking right swipe everybody it's a waste of time for both parties and it puts your profile down in the desirability factor or whatever the hell they use for their uh, rating system i didn't know what mine was because i have no clue um you know you you get a clue when you like somebody and then they send this bullshit message saying uh Hey, you right swiped on somebody that ha that's very popular. Wouldn't shouldn't you super like them? And I'm like, fuck no. I'm because there's a lot of garbage that you got to weed through on this app. And to be quite honest, it's demoralizing if you use this app too often. So when I talk about dating sites and apps, you know, keep your usage to about 20 minutes, three times a week, if that. Turn off the fucking notifications unless you're actually chatting with somebody who's matched with you. Be honest with people. Don't lie. Um, have a video chat or meet up as soon as possible to weed out those catfishers or people that are scamming. You want to really be proactive and friendly. You don't want to be aggressive and send people dick pics or shots of your genitalia because to me that's just true low-class behavior. 
you know, it's just something I don't, I would never do. You know, plus also, um, there's another scan that's been going around where someone will sign up to Tinder or whatever dating site, and it'll be a fairly attractive girl, but, and then she'll start sending you nude pics, and then she'll ask for nude pics from you. And, if, God, if you do this, don't do it. But say you do. And then apparently this person will be purportedly her father checking in on the account and threaten to take you to the authorities because this girl is under 18 and, you know, you could be labeled as a sex offender. Like, who the fuck wants that, right? No one wants to date underage girls, not me. So be aware that there are fucking scammers out there that will try to rip you off and they will try to make it so that, you know, hey, this is my daughter and why the fuck are you talking to her? Well, these people are scammers. They're just a bunch of pieces of shit that are taking advantage of lonely people on the app that are generally trying to find people and it's just awful. So getting through all that bullshit, finding a clear path through Tinder is difficult. It's really challenging to determine if someone really is interested in talking with you or if they're just wasting time. Probably the best method to weed these people out is to one, get to meet them as soon as possible when you're two or three messages in either get their number or give them your number have a video chat meet up with them somewhere in person you know be covid safe and that way you can rule them out as time wasters or people that are catfishing you know or someone's using a picture from 15 years ago when they were 130 pounds but then when you meet them they're like 260 pounds you're like what the fuck am i doing here you know like people who do that are i would just walk out i'd be like Here's, here's the money, keep the change, I'm never going to see you again, and just fuck off for wasting my time. It's just, this is awful. Be honest with people, don't waste the time, and be nice, be friendly, be happy. You know, people don't want to get into a situation where they feel threatened, so always be kind. Fall back on kindness before anything else. But always be suspicious of people that ask you for personal favors or create these wonderful stories about, you know, I need some money because my mother died and I have to get a plane ticket to some bullshit event that doesn't exist. They're just scamming you, you know. And this can actually lead into, you know, maybe this person is legit and they're having a video conversation with you and they are real, right? But two months down the road, they have this personal emergency and they really need a thousand bucks. Don't give them the money. Don't. You're not there to support them. Would they help you if you asked for money? Hell no. I don't think so. So just keep that in mind. Be very skeptical when you're working on these dating apps. There's a lot of resources on Google and on YouTube besides here. Go check it out. There's a lot of sad stories about being ripped off. People being ripped off for hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, just last year, the U.S. Um, Trade Commission said... At least $150 million U.S. was scammed out of people using online dating sites. And it's just going to keep going up and up and up. The more this pandemic goes on, the more appealing that these dating apps will be. And the more it will draw in more people and more scammers. It's just a natural ecosystem without any kind of control. And that's the problem with current online dating. There is no control in the ecosystem. There's nobody watching guard whether or not these people are real or if they're a true scammer. So be careful and I wish you the best of luck.